hey, welcome to my channel or welcome back if you're a subscriber. At the end of my videos, I always say, if you like my quick money saving tips, rants, raves, garden wisdom, art, and occasional magic. So this video is going to be a video about art. And I'm going to hopefully educate you or bring an awareness to you about why art is more than just a rich people thing and why it should be more than just an elitist sport or an elitist hobby. Most people have this idea that you have to be loaded in order to have art or to support art or collect art is another more fancy word for it. This giant, beautiful blue monkey behind me, that was given to me by a friend and I hung it in my house and it makes my house beautiful. <laughs> so there's the advantage to supporting and having artists in your life, creative people that may not be like you. They may not have the same brain structure. They may not make the same choices or live the same way you do, but it's that diversity that can bring beauty and um, yeah, beauty and, and quality into our lives. So I was bitching to a friend because I live in an area that there's a ton of money. Our area is, is I would say comfortably, literally like the financial backbone of our country right now. I live in the Silicon Valley, near the Silicon Valley in an area called um, Santa Cruz, Santa Cruz Mountains, where the average home price is a million plus. And that is not getting you more than, you're getting less than 2,000 square feet for that in general, sometimes 1,200 square feet. That being said, you would think automatically, but as we know, this isn't a necessary truth, that there would be some type of culture or some type of class that would come along with that kind of money. But what has happened instead, and it, it already existed here in the United States, but now it's really, really become a dire situation for artists in America, along with more and more assholes using AI and calling themselves artists. The thing is that all these tech people and I'm generalizing, but I would say the majority of tech people that hold the financial power that have made it impossible for artists and craftsmen to be able to afford rent in a lot of the major cities where there are these tech hubs. Also, to add insult to injury, do not support the arts. You go into, they have, you know, sometimes you have people pulling in $800,000 a year between the two couples and you walk into their home and it's full of cheap furniture and empty walls. So here's my spin on this. I'm going to tell you several things why this offends me so much. And I was, like I said, I was bitching to a friend about this because I also saw this interesting thing happening the nine years I've been here where all these young women who parents had plenty of money were getting married. And instead of having a classic wedding that would be a beautiful memory and allowing their guests to relax and, and be part of that experience, they all were going on the cheap and doing these weddings in um, like, it'd be one thing to do your wedding at your parents' house if your parents had like a really nice estate or a really beautiful yard, but this wasn't the case. And they all wanted their friends or other unqualified people to make the flowers for them. Now, I would totally encourage this if you had no money, if you were on a budget and, and you, that, that was your only resource. But what these people are doing, because they've got plenty of money and their parents have plenty of money, is they're cheapening this experience. They're cheapening this experience because I've seen the quality of, of their so-called handicraft and of something that is supposed to be this enormous, um, you know, a pinnacle, a, 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 an amazing life event. And then they're also putting the screws 
to, to the creative economy, you know, because there are people who have spent a lot of time to perfect their skills to make a beautiful bouquet flowers. And this is just one more way that my community puts the screws to and is killing the creative economy. So yesterday was the big Capitola Art and Wine Festival. Traditionally, when you have art and wine, it's because you have artists that are paying a lot of money and sometimes driving across the country to, in, it's, it's a really hard life being an artist and they're setting up booths and hoping that people that have some level of sophistication enough to want to drink and pay the price for wine, overpriced wine, to perhaps buy some art for their home to you know to enrich their lives and as i was preparing because i had i had to work i uh was running into different people that i knew different neighbors and friends and stuff and everybody was going there but as i was telling my friend how people in this area are killing artists and killing the creative economy Every single person that I talked to said that they were going to the wine festival. <laughs> Just the wine festival. When you see their logo and it says, and it has been for decades, the Capitola Art and Wine Festival. Because of course it's just the wine festival. They're just going there to drink. There's no appreciation for, and there's no support for creatives anymore. And why is this dangerous? Well, first of all, it's an economy that is untethered. It's, it's a freedom and it's a life choice that is nice to have. It's a nice option to have if you have a personality, if you have trauma in your background, if you just have a certain brain type that you cannot function in an office space, if you can't function in that hyper structure, that it literally makes you miserable and chokes you out, wouldn't you like to know that there, that you could do something else that created something beautiful and contributed to society that wasn't just a cog in the wheel? Isn't it, wouldn't, isn't it just nice to know that maybe perhaps that option is available for you even? Well, it's not gonna be available for you if you have the means and you're not supporting it. Because when you don't buy something, when you don't consume something, it disappears. It's as simple as that, basic economics. Second thing, what advantage do you think we really have over China? You know, we're talking about kids at the youngest age that are getting such discipline and such intense levels of education drilled into them that usually by the time they're in high school, they're bi or trilingual and they have math skills that most adult Americans did not have because we don't acquire them in our basic education. These, uh, the Chinese are powerful people because the government has put a huge emphasis on education. And that's why so many of the jobs in America are being taken, high paying jobs, by foreign talent. They call it foreign talent because there's not enough Americans that are smart enough to do it. And so, but that being said, the one powerful thing that America used to have and other cultures, some other cultures, a few, the one powerful thing, the one Achilles heel of the Chinese in regards to competition is that when you take someone who may be as smart as someone from China, who's an American, and you take a Chinese person and they have equal equal intelligence, and they're in the world of, let's say, engineering. What is the deal? What, it, what, what makes one person exceed more valuable or stronger in anything than just booked 
just a standard education. Intelligence, creative intelligence, creative intelligence, because with creativity, you have to use your imagination. With creativity, that takes it to the next level. You have to have a functioning imagination that you can take standard information and abstract it and put it back together again in your mind and then bring it through your body into a three-dimensional reality. That's what art is. Art is not a novelty. Art is not AI. AI is another system that will is and will further dumb down humanity. Because in actuality, art and artists, it's a valid and very powerful form of intelligence that to our knowledge is not, um, is not uh, gifted to any other species on the planet. Think about it, that I could, or my friend could, come up with an idea in our brain, formulate it, take the time to formulate it, and then bring it through our physical body into a actual three-dimensional reality. That is not a novelty. That is not something uh, invaluable. That is a very powerful form of intelligence. And because the Chinese have put such an emphasis on just the education part, the mathematics, the mathematics, the mathematics, they, when you, when you, uh, when I, when I have hung out with Chinese children or talked or had friends that were Chinese, they completely lack the creativity. They don't have that part of their brain developed. It is a, uh, it is their Achilles heel. So in America, if we're going to continue by people using AI and calling themselves artists just because they can prompt something on a computer and some robot does all the work for them and then they take credit for it, that takes no intelligence. That, 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 or excuse me, it takes very little intelligence. It takes, unless you're a, a, a savant, it takes decades to perfect a certain medium of art. Uh, yeah, so I'm just ranting as I warn you from time to time. If you're going to go to a wine, art and wine festival, consider that it is an art and wine festival and not just a place to go get boozed up. And consider the value of the creative economy because it is an economy. And it's everything from your hairdresser to your uh, the interior decorator to your florist to the guy that could do a cool mural on your wall or stencil your car out. Um, you know, it, it, and it, it, the more we disregard and are cheap and selfish, and that's what makes me so angry about the Silicon Valley. And they tried and it was a big fail. The art community tried to, to educate them, get them involved. But this is also, I believe, the curse of an industrial education and what I understand an industrial education to be, which has been a very common form of education for decades here in the US, is that you know you go to college to be a worker bee. And so basically you're streamlined to learn just whatever it is you're going to do to make money and to make money for the economy. So it's not a full education. You don't learn philosophy, you don't learn the arts, you don't learn a lot of these things that round you out. And when you don't actually partake, like if you've never taken a pottery class, when you see a ceramic sculpture or you see a, um, a beautiful hand-thrown ceramic bowl, you're not gonna have any appreciate for it because you don't know how hard it is to do. All you're seeing is a hunk of clay. But tell me, if I gave you a hunk of clay, could you do this?
If you can, I would love to meet you. Because <laughs> that's what I spent decades sacrificing hours instead of partying, instead of uh, doing all the the, 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 the the normal bullshit that people do. That's what I was perfecting, a craft. And and my early work was 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 ridiculous. Now that I look back at it, it is so juvenile. But that being said, if you have a home that has value and there is nothing on your walls except photos of your family, I would highly suggest you find an original piece of artwork, purchase it, and hang it in your home. It's something you're going to have your whole life, and the chances are if you do your research, it will actually increase in value. And if you go to a reptile gallery, they will guide you if, that is your, if that's your motive. It shouldn't be your motive, though. What it should be is something that when you come home or in your office, that it's this beautiful thing that is creating this energy and this it's improving the quality of your life. That's what art does. It improves your environment. It turns your environment into this more than just this box. It turns it into an actual space with a soul. So I highly recommend that you start supporting creative people before they're all starved out and we became become this grotesque, monotone, robot-driven, robot-controlled society because that's what's happening. And it's it just really makes me sick. And people don't understand what the long-term cost is going to be, not only to the economy, but to our choices, to our quality of life, and to our intelligence, to our intelligence. It's just like, you know, remember when we were kids and you would memorize everyone's phone number? It was just a simple thing, so good for our brains. And now, how many of us have even three phone numbers memorized? If you have even one phone number memorized past your own, you're pretty special. And this, again, with technology, we are just becoming more and more lazy. And it's not just lazy. It is affecting intelligence, just like the way people have relationships online. Instead of going out and meeting people and having the challenge of actual physical relationships where you have to negotiate things and you have to deal with things, those are the things that bring wisdom and those are the things that give us grit and those are the things that mature us. And this is the why so many people have social anxiety disorder because they were raised with a laptop and playing computer games instead of interacting. And they had these overprotective mollycoddled parents that didn't allow them to feel through and work through the normal parts of life <laughs> that make us well-rounded and mature and able to deal with life. Don't get me going on this one. Okay. I'm done ranting. Go buy some art and support people that are doing creative things. It's human. And in this time where AI is such a threat and everybody wants to blame the they and the thems and the boogeymans and the lizard people, well, where are we taking accountability for where we're seeing parts of our humanity and society destroyed? What are you doing? What are we doing? As individuals, stop blaming everyone else. Take accountability and take action.